Following Tuesday's trial verdict, <clears throat> accountability for the murder of George Floyd, the white former police officer, guilty on all three charges. Democrats negotiating <clears throat> with Republican Senator Tim Scott on the police reform bill they named after George Floyd argued that the verdict cannot be a substitute for real legislation and reform. For The New Yorker, Jelani Cobb, who was outside the Minneapolis courthouse on Tuesday, reflects on the reality of what the verdict and this week mean on a larger scale, saying, quote, it's important to remember that nothing that happened today changes the fact that we were witness to a man losing his life in the most excruciating way while constantly saying he couldn't breathe and begging for intercession from his dead mother. Some things you will never get out of your mind. Rather than say of the verdict that this is the best case scenario, I'd prefer to say that it's the least worst case scenario. Let's bring into our conversation Jelani Cobb, staff writer for The New Yorker and Columbia Journalism School professor who attended Dante Wright's funeral today. Also joining us, New York University law professor and MSNBC <laughs> contributor Melissa Murray. Um, Jelani, let me start with you. First, you're, you're there. Um, tell us about today and about your comments about Tuesday. Quite a week. Yeah, um, so I'm in George Floyd Square now. I'm in the area where he died last May. Uh, but earlier, just an hour or so ago, I was at the funeral for Dante Wright, uh, which was really, it was kind of a whiplash, you know, because there was a great deal of relief and, you know, joy, jubilation, really, uh, at the guilty verdict that came down mm -hmm. in the Derek Chauvin trial. Uh, and then just that quickly, people were kind of whipsawed back into this grieving mode. Uh, and uh, the kind of very moving ceremony uh, that was held and you know, a trumpeter did a, a solo while an artist painted a portrait of him and uh, the family members of mm. other people who've lost, uh, who've been killed in police violence uh, were there. Philando Castile's mother was there. Uh, Breonna Taylor's boyfriend was there. Uh, there were the Floyd family, significant uh, representation from the Floyd family. Uh, descendants or rather relatives of Emmett Till uh, were, were there. Uh, and so it really just was a difficult thing, uh, even as someone who has covered many of these stories. It, it was a very difficult thing to kind of witness that outpouring of community grief. Do you feel, I don't want to use optimistic, but do you feel different? Do you feel like the, the ground underneath the debate about policy changes has shifted at all because of the because of the community, because of the attention um, in the wake of Tuesday? Well, I will say this. I think that people feel like they have momentum. Uh, you know, and it was hard to see that to not think that it, from the funeral. The governor, Tim Walls, was there. Uh, uh, Senator Amy Klobuchar was there. The attorney general, uh, Keith Ellison was there, uh, and you know, nat representatives of national civil rights organizations were there. Uh, and so and they were all on one note talking about the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act uh, and saying that that has to become law. Uh, and so if there's anything uh, such as kind of having the wind at their back on this issue, then I would say that now is a moment where that's the case. And people here, even in the midst of the verdict, would say that they were cautiously optimistic. They felt like they've gotten a victory, but it's just one victory in a long road and that there's a lot of work to be done. Melissa, when I saw um, the attorney general, the current attorney general, Merrick Garland, um, addressing the, the, the policy changes at DOJ, and you read some of the, I think cautiously optimistic is the right word, cautiously optimistic reporting about the legislative process, um, you know, it's just important to remind people that the George Floyd Policing Act really is not a radical piece of legislation. Um, it, it has a lot of things in it that have a lot of public support. And I wonder what you think, both from a legal perspective and a policy perspective, about the importance of just getting that through and starting starting here. Like, I think Jelani really hit the nail on the head. Um, the verdict was certainly a catalyst for change, but a lot is going to have to happen in the policy realm. And that needs to happen at both the federal level and the state and local level. And the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act is certainly one step. But there are many questions about getting this resolved and through the Senate. And there are a lot of questions on both sides of the aisle about whether they can come to some kind of reconciliation on questions of qualified immunity. There's considerable discussion of whether chokeholds will continue to be um, included in the bill as something that is prohibited or whether that will be taken out. And it's unclear whether activists on the ground will find the ultimate bill that, if it gets passed, is actually satisfying for the reforms that they want. But most importantly, 
it's worth noting that quint- that policing is quintessentially a local and state level enterprise. Right. The federal government can certainly encourage states and localities to do better, but ultimately, a lot of the policy reform efforts have to come at the local level. Melissa, can you speak to this whipsaw, uh, whiplash, uh, which is the perfect word for it, week that Jelani describes, the verdict Tuesday, and another tragic public sharing of a family's grief? Well, I think it made very clear that the verdict on Tuesday was a respite, but it is not a reprieve, that there are larger questions about policing, about the propriety of certain protocols, and whether, in fact, public safety is actually served by the kind of policing that we currently have in the United States. And these are bigger questions that are not going to be resolved by any single piece of litigation in the courts, but really, again, will be reformed if they're going to be reformed at the policy level and at the grassroots level. You know, Jelani, we have covered the voter suppression laws that, you know, it certainly gets our attention when the rare Republican will say, oh, you know, these are all built on a lie. And now there's new reporting in the New York Times this week about the attacks on the rights to assemble. I think 34 states are looking at bills to clamp Mm -hmm. down on protests. The Black Lives Matter protests were Washington Post analysis has them at 96.3 percent peaceful. Another one has them at 97.3 percent peaceful. How do you combat Republican legislating based on lies? I mean, I think that's the question. Uh, And certainly, you know, we as media have an obligation here. Uh, to keep telling the story and to keep pointing out uh, inconsistencies here uh, and to to keep revealing uh, the canard uh, of uh, there being problems with the integrity of our ballots. Uh, And so uh, there's been a very successful disinformation and misinformation campaign around these things. Uh, But I'll also say that these things are not unrelated. You know, the fact that we can see Mm -hmm. people have the, the temerity Uh, to pass laws banning a public assembly when they did virtually nothing in the face of what happened on January 6th. Uh, And that is uh, in itself just kind of highlights the hypocrisy and contradictions that we're looking at here. And and one last thing to Melissa's point, this is absolutely a local issue. Uh, This is not going to be solved on the federal level. There are 18,000 police departments in this country. And the federal government couldn't provide oversight for all of them if they wanted to. Uh, And so this is going to quintessentially be a local issue. It has to be one in each uh, small locale and in small community. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.